The other major piece, I suppose, that came out in the last year, which was referred to earlier, was the water blueprint communication. This has a number of interesting uh, components to it, which are designed to fit within the water framework directive. But perhaps one of the things I'll focus on specifically is, which we find most interesting, is the natural water retention measures component in that. This is the idea that you can um, manage part of the natural environment or engineer it so that it provides uh, additional capacity to reduce vulnerability to floods and droughts and so forth. Idea, there are steps on the way. You understand from a meeting last week that we now have uh, a pilot project which is in the planning at EU level and they're looking at sort of some sensible steps to try and roll out the natural... Uh, sorry, I'm reading how many minutes I've got left. The natural water um, resource measures pilot project. And in there, they're looking to try and bring this thinking, indeed, into the second or perhaps more realistic, the third river basin management plans and flood risk management plans. So that's a bit of the context, rather quickly spoken. What I want to do now is try and give you a flavour of some of the conclusions we've drawn from the Restore project on our work on what the challenges are to rolling out these policies in a way that you can bring river restoration in. I've tried somehow to kind of group these uh, in a way that makes some sort of sense. One of the things I think that's come back from a lot of the, the consultations and engagement events from Restore is um, that you need to be able to make the case for restoration. And, and we've heard that quite often, I think, within here. There's a sort of a way to translate it into political decision making at a particular scale from, say, local, provincial, right, sometimes up to a basin scale which is a, there's a need to raise awareness of opportunities for restoration and the benefits that it brings. And to achieve this, we need to share, share achievements better, which is a lot of what Restore has sought to do through the development of a wiki and sharing some, uh, some of the best case examples. Something else which I think will also be picked up uh, in one of the presentations after mine is um, establishing perhaps more concretely what the business case is, is in it. You need investment to uh, get a lot of river restoration at large scale off the ground. And that often means you need players who are prepared to put their money in to make it happen, and not just government but also the, biz the business sector, if you like. So we need to be able to show what's in it for me and why is this an effective solution to the problems. And we don't do that very well yet. Sometimes you could say it's bordering more on religion, I believe this, rather than having hard facts to back up your case. So there's a need to, to establish that. Both these points, then you need to think, well, points that came out of our consultations demonstrate the economic case. The tools are out there. I mean, these are fairly well, widely known. The business community is increasingly aware of them. The World Business Council has done a great job in trying to put together digestible uh, manuals and guidance documents on this. But still, it needs to be rolled out in the institutions that need to do river restoration. And when you have this sort of information, then you have the ability to show cost-benefit analyses and relativise between different options within a basin and how river restoration can contribute. Also, and another presentation will pick up on this uh, after me, is you need to be able to set targets and show impact. So again, you need these sorts of economic cases and knowledge and data to be able to say we're going to achieve this and show the impact in relation to policy. And we're still a way away from that, I think, in doing this in a systematic way. Financing is another key area, I think. Um, the uh, review we did under Restore really talked a lot about, well, you come across as sort of a nice-to-do thing. It's an activity that people feel is perhaps to be cheeky, a bit fluffy but they don't really, it's not a mainstream thought within uh, river basin management and planning at the moment. So we need to find ways to really mainstream investment and put it in at the right scale. There are financing streams, uh, and the presentation by Alistair Driver talked about, it's still very hard to bring finance streams with different policy areas together to really fund an integrated project. Payment for ecosystem services is less and less an innovative approach, if you like, but still it needs to find uh, really mainstream acceptance and implementation in many parts of the world, so this needs to come forward. Private sector engagement will be reflected upon by Cathy. This is something which you see increasingly, but still we need to find a trick to unlock this and get the business community more engaged on the ground with government and civil society. Um, I'm probably running short of time, aren't I? Joined up thinking between finance streams, actually I think I mentioned that, in terms of directing uh, different policy finance streams together. Another interesting point that came out of the consultations is that in some cases, the money is there, but actually the capacity to use it at the appropriate level where you want to implement river restoration is not. So you also need to find a way to invest in building the capacity of players on the ground to be able to use this money in an effective way. 
policy implementation points, well, integration, integration, integration seems to come through in many, many uh, presentations. It's also referred to in the financing. But it's, if you really want to uh, achieve impacts in a holistic way at a stretch of river, you need uh, implementation policy to implement reflecting the different processes in the watershed. It needs to focus on, uh, on the drivers and in an integrated way in all the drivers. Very often uh, policy implementation at the moment is piecemeal in relation to one or other policy. Um, we need to find ways to stop currently. <laughs> so I'll look through. Um, we have um, ways to achieve integration. We have, we'll hear about from uh, Giancarlo on river contracts. We need ways to upscale and support implementation of these sorts of integrative tools. Uh, river contracts, water stewardship, other approaches need to be found and, and mainstreamed, capacitated across uh, the region. And there's also a need to underpin policy in certain areas with improved research. So one of the areas picked out by Restore was on improved understanding of morphology uh, and fish passages and so forth. This would be my last slide. Um, so finally, what, and I think this is a theme running across all those points, is we really need to find a way how to implement it. It doesn't feel any more like it's we need new policy areas or we need to lobby for change in different policy areas. On the whole, the policy is there. It's really how do we bring implementation to the ground now. Um, key points that have come out of Restore have been a stronger knowledge base, so to provide consistent and comparable data between different sites, to share best practices with people such as the wiki resource under the Restore project. We need to implement, improve implementation capacity in terms of reinforcing and stimulating technical and practitioner networks. This is a big part of the work of uh, ECRR and the National River Restoration Centres that it uh, works with. Um, you need to support grassroots implementation through this. River trusts are another good example. You need to be able to stimulate planners and landscape architects to see things in a new way. You need these networks to achieve that. They are the arms and legs of the policy, if you like. And finally, there's a lot needed in terms of guidance, manuals, tools to try and help people to translate concepts into their own language, if you like, of different sectors, and then help them to be able to do things in a practical way. And you see this increasingly now in the business sector. They're trying to grapple with it. So I want to stop there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris.